All right, so we're going to demonstrate a load bar standard RJ45 terminating onto the end of the cable. Cat 6A, unshielded direct burial. <music> Recommended tools are you have a flush cutter, near, nearly required no matter what termination you're doing. It's a very useful tool, period. Our all-in-one crimp and termination tool, which has an excellent cable stripper on it, which we're going to make use of. And then, of course, our load bar plug. So we're going to unlock the tool. And we're going to strip off about an inch and a half to two inches of cable jacket. And what you're looking to do is put a score on the jacket. You don't want to cut through it. So there, I see I've got a good score. And I'm going to break the score there and break the score there. And then going to pull off the cable jacket, and we're going to keep this around to untwist our conductor pairs. There's also a rip cord, and there is some polyethylene tape here, a dielectric wrap, and then you've got the water block tape. We're going to remove all of that. Once you get all the dielectric wraps removed, you're going to notice that in the center of the cable there is what's known as a spline. And that spline is to keep the conductor pairs separated to prevent internal crosstalk inside the cable. It's a simple matter of removing it. What I usually do is make four snips at a downward angle on each wing of a spline. And some people cut it straight across. Uh, really just work, do what works for you, but if you're trying to get a plug on especially, you're going to have trouble if, any, if there's excess spline here. So I made four snips, and I'm going to twist, and I'm going to remove it, and that gets the vast majority of the spline off. The next step is to untwist your conductor. So that's where your piece of cable jacket came in handy that you removed earlier. Just start the untwist with your fingers, and then untwist. Okay, so we've got all the conductor pairs untwisted. And normally, I would use a maybe a metal dowel to straighten out these conductors. I've just started switching back to maybe a pair of, like a piece of plastic like an end of my clippers. One of the reasons is that you can overwork the copper in these conductors and thin them out, and that's something you don't want to do. It can cause trouble with fitment with RJ45s. So what I'll do is I will first set myself up for success because I'm going to be going with the T568B pattern, but you can use A or B. Just make sure you're using it at both ends. And uh, so that would be white, orange, orange, and then we have white, green, and we've got blue, white, blue, then green, then white, brown, and brown. So I've kind of got them pre-set up for me, just so I know where everything's at. And typically, two to three passes on each conductor wire is enough to straighten it out. They don't have to be perfectly straight. In fact, if you try to get them perfectly straight, you're going to end up thinning out conductors. All right, so those are straight enough. All right, so we've got white, orange. Then we've got orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, and brown. Now, look where your top of your cable is. The way I like to work with it is from top down. So you got white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, and brown. And it pays to double and triple check that. Flush cut straight across. And then with the load bar, open end, there are the flared end towards the cable. And with the white, orange at the top of the stripe and the angle of the load bar facing you, because it is position sensitive, that's how you're going to get the load bar on. And it usually helps to use a rocking motion to get that load bar on there. And what you're looking for is about 3 sixteenths inch of a distance. Now sometimes you may have a conductor that's going to curl up on you. Just straighten it back out and push the load bar back down again. And you don't want to get the load bar all the way to the jacket. It's going to cause trouble with seating in your plug. So about 3 sixteenths of an inch, no more than a quarter. Okay. So we've got the load bar seated down as far as we want to get it, and then you're going to want to flush cut at the front of the load bar. 
So now you've got a nice little unit to put into your plug. The way you put this into the plug is by with the bottom side up facing you, that means latch side down, angle of the load bar pointed towards you, white orange at the top. And simply insert like this until the load bar seats under the golden contacts. And you know they have because the load bar is fitting perfectly under the golden contacts. Your cable is set to the right depth. You want the cable jacket to seat at least to this point right here, which is this drop off ledge. You want the cable to seat to that point or a little after and we're after. And then it's a simple matter of terminating it. Put it into your tool. You can start to close it, take your hand off because this bar here is going to adjust the plug in the cavity to allow it to seat properly. Push all the way down, release, take it out, check your work. So you can see that the strain latch has made a divot in the cable jacket, which means it's going to hold it on there real good. All of your golden contacts are down and the plug looks really good. So please leave a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below, let us know what you thought about it. And with that, I'm going to say happy networking.